the next panel discussion we are going to have is about local cotton challenges and possible solution and for that this panel discussion will be moderated by mr iqbal khurram ceo ys group and nc trading usa and the panelist we are going to have is dr khalid abdullah cotton commissioner government of pakistan dr shafiq ahmed regional director better cotton initiative dr masood arshad wwf pakistan mr bilal israel khan executive director fap progressive farmer and mr khwaja tahir mahmood ceo country ahead of control union pakistan private limited thing ladies and gentlemen uh, really appreciate cotton council international and tech talk in organizing such a nice event and it's nice to see so many industry birds and people related to this industry sitting in this room i remember when i first came to this conference this room was half full and now it's just fifth year it's almost full and we may need another hall next year so thanks a lot for all the participants who have come all the way from the world and everybody realizes that textile sector for this country is really important and just quickly briefing you what textile sector means for pakistan is that it's the largest manufacturing industry in pakistan which contributes to 8% of our gdp and it employs roughly 45% labor force directly or indirectly other than that pakistan used to be the fourth largest cotton producer in the world going down now and we have the third largest spinning capacity in asia and which makes us the eighth largest exporter of textile commodities in the world so speaking of cotton for which we'll have this very nice panel with us cotton really matters because it contributes to 70% of your spinning cost so it is very important that cotton is bought handled in a very accurate manner and pakistan you see being being a large large consumer of cotton our consumption used to be around 15 16 million bales of cotton still the same pakistani size but our production which used to be the same is now continuously dipping we have an expert panel here we have representation from the government we have representation from the farmer side and also we have people from bci wwf and control union international bodies that can explain to us that what is happening with the pakistani cotton so i'll just take my seat there so welcome everybody so i will start off with the question the first question is which is in everybody's mind you see in pakistan the cotton production is continuously going down for the last few years and the reasons were scarcity of water not using the proper seed fertilizer misusage misinformation towards the farmer side but slowly these things were improving the knowledge base is improving people are getting literate but still why the question is why the cotton production is continuously going down and uh, what is happening at the government level what is the government doing to make it sure it doesn't happen So I'll start off. It's an open question. Uh, anybody can answer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, this is of obviously uh, something that has been, you know, discussed threadbare for years and years <coughs> in all kinds of meetings and symposiums and uh, at the government level, privately, and. Um, i don't think there have been held more meetings for any other subject on agriculture except the revival of cotton in pakistan and the tragedy uh, of its uh, you know steady decline and uh, <clears throat> so you probably uh, all know the reasons also so I, i'm i'm probably not going to be saying anything new uh, but still um, i'll uh, uh you know uh, highlight what are the main problem the first of course is that uh you know we are the probably the only country which has suffered from this uh, uh, uh clcv uh, cotton leaf curl virus since uh, the early 90s uh me i mean just imagine if we didn't have this problem we'd be uh, absolutely drowning in cotton now because we would have been able to take advantage of all the excellent varieties around the world uh, which produce uh, very high yielding very high quality cotton 
but uh, we cannot uh, import and plant any uh, 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 cotton variety from abroad at all because uh, it is devastated by this virus uh, right away and we have to use our own uh, varieties and um, they have you know uh, not been able to uh, their ball weight is less and uh, uh, we have not been able to um, okay the second uh, problem which uh, has been uh, plaguing uh, or re reducing the yield is that there are two pests uh, the I'm, I'm talking as a farmer now uh, the white fly and the pink ballworm they have developed a resistance to all the known uh, uh, chemicals the pesticides uh, in the market so it has become very difficult and uh, hard to control these and they uh, uh, sort of cause a lot of damage and uh, sort of uh, reduction in yield and uh, also increase the cost to the farmer so that then it becomes uh, unprofitable for him. Uh, thirdly, um, there is a huge uh, lack of research or perhaps it's dissemination uh, because uh, we also need to develop uh, uh, cotton varieties uh, which are uh, tolerant to heat. This is one of our uh, very, very, um, uh, you know, sort of kind of tragedy, tragic event for farmers that they uh, spend uh, so much uh, of their resources and their effort in, uh, in uh, applying nutri nutrients to their uh, cotton plants uh, and uh, uh, protecting them from pests. And then uh, suddenly, you know, we have a little heat wave where the temperature, uh, uh, night time temperature rises about 37 degrees and all the buds and all the flowers and all the small uh, bowls, they just, uh, you know, drop down on to the ground. And, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, that's a very crestfallen time for the farmer. Fourthly, uh, farmer is also suffering from, uh, uh, you know, lack of support price uh, for their crop. First, uh, sometimes it happens that uh, during mid-season, uh, the because of the fluctuation in the cotton prices, the seed cotton prices, sometimes it falls so below, so much uh, below their you know break even point that then they stop uh, making any investment in it, and uh, then uh, that again uh, 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 results in a lot of. Um, so, to the, the some of the solutions to these problems is number one. Uh, we must uh, go into minimum tillage farming. This is, uh, you know, very close to my heart. Uh, usually cotton uh, is planted after wheat. We have a wheat, wheat cotton resource, uh, uh, sort of cycle. And uh, then the farmers spend uh, so much time and so much uh, investment in preparing their land after wheat and that it also results in um, in the crop being planted late. If you were, this is not, not invent, reinventing the wheel, you know, it's being done all over the world. If we could, um, I, I mean, there's no time for me to go into the details of that, but if we could do that, then um, the advantages of that are that it will be a reduction in, um, uh, in land uh, preparation cost, preservation of the soil organic matter, and uh, safety to some extent from by heavy rains, damage by heavy rains like uh, as it has happened this year. And uh, finally, um, research is the key to uh, cotton's future, but our terribly compromised judiciary system allows mills which are supposed to donate uh, uh, their share of the cotton success fund necessary for research are, un are able to avoid payment of this cess by taking refuge in stay orders which are freely doled out by our courts. Uh, these uh, laws need to be amended. Actually, 
you know, this is a very vast subject and I'm, I'm sorry, I've already, I think, taken more no, than... No, no, sir, it is very good, a very detailed reply. So I would just add one more thing to it. Yes, you highlighted the reasons very nicely and yes, we are facing these challenges. But we are all living in a very advanced age. And I was in this uh, USDA program tour, training tour a few years ago, where we visited Monsanto's farm, uh, seed research center. And they told us that in the US, they genetically modify the seed based on the area it is sown. So where there are more rains, there is a resilient, rain resilient seed. Where there are less rains, less resilient seed. So in this modern age, the question still remains, what, the, what is happening at the government level, which is hampering all this cotton issue? If you would like to answer, sir. Yeah, I mean, coming to the challenges with cotton, I will say that we always blame climate change and weather. Mm. Yes. And we can compete it with specific technology only. There is no other way to do it. First thing is that government and we, our research institute, our farmers, they should focus on the latest research and development specific to our local conditions. We take the advantage of those research, just like Bilal Sahib said, that use of zero tillage. But mm. do we have enough technology to adopt that research? No. And the biggest hindrance in our cultivation system, agriculture system is very small farm size, yes. which cannot facilitate adoption yeah. of the latest technology. Yeah. So we need to make a mechanism how we can group our farmers, how yes. we can consolidate our land so mm. that latest technology and development can be adopted at mm. our farm level. Yes, you're absolutely right. And then you see what we have witnessed is one more factor is the prof profitability of the crops which uh, comes to a farmer when he sows the cotton. So we have seen, especially in Punjab and lower upper Sindh area, farmers are shifting to more lucrative crops like sugarcane and other things. So we have seen that seed research is helping. Certain crops are growing. But why cotton for some reason is not achieving that point? And if, if Control Union or BCI or if you would like to answer to me that you, you are international bodies who are trying to promote sustainability and progressive and somehow this farmer can grow. What do you think what is happening here and what can be done to change it? Yeah. Okay. Give you uh, um, from a management perspective. Um, I think a lot of stuff has been already said on the technical aspects, but uh, let me uh, give one justification for from management side. Uh, the way um, sugarcane has been promoted, yes. I guess uh, there has been a complete supply chain available for the sugarcane. Like uh, if you go to the one industry, they have uh, they are offering free seeds, they are offering uh, uh, fertilizers, pesticides, and everything in order to promote the sugarcane within a specific region. And I think the cotton uh, generals or the cotton industry has failed to do that because they haven't been able to uh, give anything to the farmers and because they are not making a lot of investment in that sector in order to attract the cotton farmers back into their uh, cotton farming. So my point is that uh, if we have to uh, like bring it back into its like um, uh, uh, bring the cotton uh, farming back, I think it is important that we should also develop a supply chain from that perspective where the industry also makes investment with the farmers prior to their uh, uh, to, to their cultivation so that uh, because the farmers are not rich um, in uh, the, especially the poor and small uh, farmers. So this is one uh, the thing that I feel that this could be uh, done. Yeah. You see comparing situations like uh, India, our next door neighbor, in 2003-04, our production was same as theirs. They are facing the same challenges, same uh, pests, same climate, everything is same. Their crop is now close to 40 million and we were at 15, we are down to maybe 6 this year or maybe 4, God knows because of the calamity. But challenges are same to both nations. Are we not serious about it or what actually could be done? The question is still there, what actually is needed? Who can help promote this sector go ahead? Is, is research is hampering it? Because you see, we have very nice researchers. Most of the talent here is so good. Are the researchers not being properly funded by the government? Or what is happening? Because you see, 
the more this cotton goes down our industry will continue to grow so our resilience on imported cotton dependability will continue to grow and but still you see we need to have some protocols to ensure this cotton crop doesn't go away you know pakistan uh, used to grow cotton on 3.2 million hectares and yes. this year we cultivated like uh, 2 million hectare you, you know we lost like uh, one uh, 1.2 million hectares during the last 10 Ten years, and that's all because of profitability. You like uh, Bilal uh, said earlier, uh, it's uh, a matter of pro profitability. Um, uh, with 800 kilogram um, uh, per <coughs> acre yield, cotton is no longer profitable. With competing crops like sugarcane, rice, and maize, they are protected, while cotton is not protected. That makes cotton farmer just at the verge of you know. making decision whether you should plant cotton or corn or rice the second thing is uh, um you right to say uh, is uh, uh, our research is underfunded research program is 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 not supporting you know our um, productivity enhancement schemes you know our targets we cannot ma match that uh, uh, with with uh, low funded research programs Uh, well um, i would say it's not fair to compare pakistan with india in fact uh, india has uh, uh, increased its area three times during this year these these uh, two two decades while pakistan lost 1 million hectare yeah. so it's, it's a lot of difference And if you look at uh, the yields uh, pakistan still you know getting a fair yield in a band of 10% plus minus during all these years yield is not bent down it's just the age, the productivity and that is because of area um climate change is another big challenge that's coming ahead and uh, we were facing for the last 5 years temperatures sometime went up and sometime irregular rains and this year you know heavy rains that lost more than 80% of the sand crop so that that's my point on this thank you i would like for i would like to add okay let me uh, please collate all your questions and queries into one single answer much of us much of everything has gone wrong with pakistan cotton in last two or three decades you said that we were equal on the same in 1990 or 95 the same production as of indian cotton but then they went into buying uh, bolgod 1 and then bolgod 2 bt1 bt2 i think so that tremendously improved the uh, crop size of indian cotton may be going many times higher than pakistan but uh, we went into negotiation with monsanto but it did not materialize due to various uh, economic reasons and also political reasons and maybe some other hidden reason so we were unable to fetch that technology at the right time and uh, then we lost that uh, however one thing is uh, good bolgar bt cotton also reduces the fertility of the land it has happened in nagpur india it has happened at various other places maybe in australia so uh, once you are into bt cotton for decades then the fertility of the land decreases some may not agree but the research has proved that our fate lies in probably i don't doctor sub knows better maybe hybrid seed or something now what has gone wrong in other aspects too it has been a free market Uh, let me talk openly i see so many people connected with the cotton the whole cotton world is here in pakistan there is no marketing system there is no selling system there is no buying system there is no uh, classification system everybody everybody is doing its might somebody it is bull market the farmers see mills and ginners at their mercy so they sell sometimes the mills are are the bulls and they they and the farmers at the mercy and they they have their here but everything is wrong there should be a system in pakistan cotton wherein the pakistan cotton is classified on the basis of grade and staple and strength and various hvi ratings there should be a standard system wherein the price nowadays this is the price of alipur the price of khanpur price of raimiar khan price of whatever station you sell grade 5 cotton you sell grade 1 cotton the mills are going to pay the same price because nobody checks nobody knows 
this is totally wrong it should be based on quality because in bearish season or in bullish season it should the actual cotton which is produced should fetch its exact value let us say there is a spot rate of karachi cotton see it may be good or it may be wrong but there is a barometer in in this country i don't see at much places so when there is a spot rate is it linked to grade 2 staple 1 1 16 3.5 to 4.9 micron air and various other factors and moisture so that cotton whether produced alipur or multan or rahimiyar khan should fetch the same price but it is not like that so the farmers nobody is willing to produce quality in pakistan and if you don't if you take that factor of quality out of it then it's only quantity so so you produce quantity but that is not the fun we also need the spinners also need quality cotton it's not only the quantity even if we, as of now if we start producing more cotton in pakistan it will take maybe 20 years to bring it to the level when there is no imports or maybe it never will come to that point so let us work on both increasing the quantity increase the quality maybe increasing the packing as well reducing the contamination but where is the coordinated effort government is doing its own effort yes no doubt they are doing doctor sahib is sitting i see him since 35 40 years he is always working aptama is working pcg is working but where is the collective effort we are a single nation we we fight we always look forward to if i am drawing in water i am looking forward to the government help why i must look forward to the help from my fellow people in my same village the, the government must help so there is no coordinated effort we are running around in different sections it is my honest and humble appeal that everybody should come at the same page maybe form a task force aptama should get together with pcga with pcc pakistan government which is pcc pakistan government fap they should form an action committee they should collectively reduce. this has been, happened the action committees have been formed only for one or two years then they are political based the government is gone the committee is gone it, we are a nation we should have a continuity we should make a plan for next 50 years for pakistan everybody should get together i don't know where we we are at the end of a dark tunnel we can't use bt we don't have alternate seed seed is the, if you ask me seed is the biggest problem in pakistan now we don't have certified seed we don't have dependable seed farmers are at the mercy of buying whatever seed they can get government has put some controls i'm sorry i'm taking more time but government has put some controls but still the seed is not available here then the sugar is eating away the areas of cotton there is a law but still it is eating away cotton i can go on and on for speaking but i'll close it here but i think this forum should provide a platform to go forward good because sorry you see we know pakistan can produce good cotton inherently our cotton is good because there are private sector firms now who are cultivating cotton in different parts of punjab and we see some cotton is grown in balochistan which unfortunately swept off in the floods which is giving very good yields and it is good, giving you good quality parameters our cotton diability is very good so yes the quality is there but as you said the collective effort is not there so everybody is doing their research in their own direction and not combining research sharing data so yes if collective effort is done maybe we we will have an answer if their standards are there i remember we used to be 1467 1503 and certain types which used to be there but yes you're right is the rate of rajanpur alipur shadadpur kotri these kind of rates are now there so standard standardization maybe somebody has to come up and come up with a standard for pakistani cotton and then we can improve based on the area so coming on to a different topic uh, moving to sustainability you see we we heard the presentation sustainability is the way going forward and if you go to any retailer or any brand they ask you okay can you do bci can you do organic can you do this can you do that so how pakistan is tackling this sustainability thing and the international body sitting in pakistan how they are ensuring that the farmer is educated enough and government is the government supporting this sustainable drive because even if we go to 40 million bales ahead and we are not following any sustainability protocols then that 40 million bales will go to waste so in your opinion how the sustainability is going to affect and at what level pakistan is at par with our competition in different countries uh, like i said earlier profitability and uh, you know assurance of price is uh, very important and uh, um uh, uncertainty in cotton market uh, uh, that is the major you know uh, cause of effect that 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 effect 
formal decision on in, in crop management. Um, like if uh, during the season prices drops, uh, it, 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 uh, the farmer won't invest in, in crop management, in fertilizer and pesticide. So that makes pro productivity lesser. So that's very important and uh, government has done um, a price intervention policy last year and this year as well. Uh, the, uh, government guarantees a minimum price uh, to a farmer if uh, market crashes. The government will buy that uh, uh, yes. on, uh, cotton on that price. So that's uh, number one. Um, a seed has been discussed a lot, and especially the GMO, uh, multi-gene uh, technology. Uh, recently, government uh, has made a uh, committee uh, under the chairmanship of finance minister to uh, work with uh, multinational and uh, uh, technology provider companies, seed companies, to negotiate on introduction of uh, seed technology in Pakistan. Uh, that's another thing. Um, standardization uh, uh, mentioned a lot here. Uh, in fact, Pakistan is very in one of the very few countries where uh, cotton grades are made. And, uh, Pakistan has its own grade and it has legislation and yes. all laws are in place. Uh, but it's uh, only a matter of its implementation. And um, uh, we are working with the uh, provincial government because it's a domain of the provincial government to implement um, uh, the cotton grades and of course uh, uh, because it's uh, uh, good for every sector, uh, for all stakeholders to have implemented cotton grades and you know Pakistan uh, is one of very few countries where uh, still we pick cotton by hand. And uh, is supposed to be very clean and very uh, quality cotton uh, instead of uh, you know picking by machines. But still, uh, we are we are facing a lot of challenges in in uh, cotton quality and trade. So government is uh, committed, you know, uh, to to do something in cotton in next few years. So let's hope and. Uh, so there is light at the end of the tunnel. We, we believe, you see, we have the capacity to uh, change things. We have our friends from CCI, Cotton USA. They are expert in their field. So I think if there's some collaboration by Pakistani associations with the, with the people in the US who are our friends, I think they can help us because they face the same challenges in their country. So I think we need proper collaboration. We need some unification between different trade bodies. Whatever. And uh, before I close this, since we are short on time, one one minute last uh, closing remarks, please. I would like to add, I would appreciate Pakistan is deep into sustainability. I would highly appreciate all the cotton value chain is mostly certified with different sustainable programs. And I don't know about the other word, but they are serious into it. Almost all the garments units are sustainable certified all the textile industries, even I think 30, 40 ginners are certified now under GOTS. The, we are also producing organic cotton. So we appreciate, I think we are good into sustainable and we can look forward to year 2030 with a good approach when it will be, it has to be carbon neutral. So we, we are well into this. Some closing yeah. remarks. Please. Yeah. I think um, uh, um, from, from my perspective, I guess, uh, Sustainability is when you talk about trans transparency and traceability. So if you ensure this uh, during this process and if you want to make it really sustainable, I think you need to really work on these two aspects. That is trans transparency and traceability so that the international buyers can directly go back to their uh, sourcing area that how the, yes. the everything is being done so that uh, they will make sure that this is happening again and again and mm. they will continue uh, th their programs and sourcing from such regions. Mm. Thank you. Any closing yeah, remarks? I mean, sustainability is very important for Pakistan as well as world. I mean, if we talk about the productivity, there are only two things which can support productivity or profitability. Yield and yeah. acceptance in the market. Yes. And acceptance in the market is either due to quality or due to some standards certification. Yes. Pakistan is at least at this moment at the top of the list in sustainable cotton production. Yes. So I think better cotton being the biggest, you can sustainability initiative 
yeah. is working in Pakistan since 2010, and at this moment, Pakistan is coming among second, third highest producer of the sustainable cotton in the world. Hmm. Maximum sustainable cotton is sourced through our textile sector. Yes. So if we continue this by the support of government, if we own these, this type of initiatives, this type of standards, I think our product will be having good acceptance in the market. And if we, you can see the sustainability, if we also work on standardization of our quality, definitely our product demand will increase in the world. Yes. Thank you very much, gents, for the wonderful deep insight and remarks. And uh, if any questions, please, otherwise we can close the session. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdul Shakur Khatri. I am the founder chairman of All Pakistan Textile Processing Mills Association. I have listened to your very valid candid views and I really appreciate your long life experiences in your respective fields. Sir, we as a Pakistani know the crop, cotton crop is much damaged. But on the other hand, there is a lot of work of research has been done in the Faisal Abad area and the government uh, nominated area as well with a special type of the seeds which increase the yield. The present problem of Pakistan agriculture on the cotton is the yield. We don't get the, that much amount of the yield which our neighbor, even India, is getting per acre. So our emphasis should be the yield. When we are talking, sir, cotton, why not the viscose? The other substitute, which can substitute our requirement. Now, under the circumstances, what we have seen, Pakistan's crop, we don't know what will be the yield or availability. So immediately, government should ban export of cotton because we survive on the value added. If there is no value added, no nothing addition, what billion of target, export target we are talking with IMF. And if we want really and we are sincere with our uh, export, the government should put ban immediately on the export of cotton. This is my humble su suggestion. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.